<laughs> Eldon Campbell. Eldon. Oh, that's not yeah. somebody I remember. No. Oh, Wright, he's somebody you know. I remember. He was a power forward on the Lakers through the '90s, and he was like, you know, kind of like cons- like one of their more uh, high ceiling players. But he was so inconsistent. So I, I grew up as a kid, fucking living and dying with Eldon Campbell with his nice role. So, so did you go to games at the Coliseum? I, uh, you're thinking no. If the Lakers played at the 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 Great Western at the Forum. Forum. Sorry, Fabulous. yeah, at the Forum. Forum. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I I mean I went to a few games. I I didn't go to games on the regs. They were all, like I my first game. Sure. I went to like a you know a handful of games total at the Forum, if not even less than that. I remember I went to in one in ninety two ninety three season was my first. They played the Sacramento Kings and Mitch Richmond and lost, and then. I went to one. I went to a Lakers. I went to one of the, uh, uh, Kobe's um, second year or for his first year when they were in the playoffs and lost. I went to a game playoff game, um, and then his second year I was a ball boy, and that's when I was a ball boy. His second year, that's when he ran his fingers through my afro, mm. and com- and complimented me on my afro, and I'll never forget that. Nice. And then by then it would have been Staples Center. No, no. By then it was still the Forum. Uh, Staples Center was night was it the first year they won the championship with Phil Jackson, Kobe and Shaq was the ninety nine uh, ninety eight no ninety nine zero zero season, that was their first so, year in the Staples. So Center. so who was co- who was coaching early Kobe, early Kobe before Phil Jackson was Del Harris. Oh, okay. so Del Harris yeah. came over in ninety I think starting the ninety four five season, um maybe it was ninety three ninety four maybe it was ninety five one of those two. I think it was 94, 95. That's when like the Lakers, my first year being a Lakers fan, they didn't even make the fucking playoffs. Del Harris comes. They get Cedric Sabalos, if you remember mm, him. I do remember absolutely. him. Yes, absolutely. He was their best player, and and they immediately became a playoff team again. And they went to like the second round, busted out. But they, but you know, Del Harris could never get past. He couldn't even. I the he 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 could barely get past the second round with Shaq and Kobe. He made it once to the con- to the semifinal uh, to the conference championships, and they like got swept by whoever they played. So that's what led to him being canned finally, and Phil Jackson being hired. Um, but he was there from like ninety four to ninety nine. Del sure. Delmer kind of a journeyman Delmer Harris. Because I remember he was a yeah he was he coached for the Suns. He he got traded to the Suns uh, because he went AWOL for like five days of the Lakers. Yeah. He just disappeared. It was a mystery. I remember because the day I went to a game when our family friend George Zedek of Charlotte Hornets, his first year, he played at the Forum. It's another game I went to. And it was the week of Cedric Sabalos' Agatha Christie-like disappearance where nobody knew where he went. He was just yeah. completely vanished for five days. And then he claimed that he got married during those five days when he resurfaced. So instantly they were looking for a, tra- they were going to trade him. They had to get rid of him. They had to get rid of him. Guess who they traded him for at the time. It seemed like a give a, like a fire sale, but guess who they got for him? Robert, Ooh. Robert, Ory. Robert Ory. Oh, yeah. Uh... At the time it seemed like a complete, like, I think they got Robert Ory. I mean, unless I'm like fuck, fucking, unless I'm off my, by of my mind out of my mind i think that's who they got for him big shot so, bob big shot bob came from that uh kind of almost giveaway trade when sabalas I'm, lost I, I, there he is again whoever that guy is yeah, yeah, i don't yeah. know i don't he just every time it's very lynch so like cool. lynch character he, it's, like, he's absolutely like just like <laughs> justin throw but um you know cedric sabalos he hosted an r&b the morning show like an r&b what? music show yeah here in phoenix for a while that's so cool yeah. Damn. That's Did he exactly do anything like for the Suns? Well, he was he was on the Suns. Did he, was he any good? Before he was drafted by the Suns and was a starter when they were playing oh. in the playoffs when they had Barkley against you know like the Warriors, I think, you know. Mitch Richmond. Yeah, yeah, the run yeah. TMC. The thing is that yeah. I, as I recall, he he never he did not pop until he went to the Lakers and suddenly became a 20 points a game star that year. And I felt like it was a big surprise. Like it was a Jerry West special that he kind of like discovered Sabalos as a star who hadn't uh, had been nothing but a role player to that point. That's how I remember it. Don't know if reality. Well, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Here's what I do know. He won the slam dunk contest in, in like 92, maybe. Mm. And he was, I don't know if he Interesting. was. I can't remember what he looks like for some, like, I, I remember like maybe a bit. Was he a forward? He got bad COVID. I remember. That was one thing I heard Small about forward. He, he was really, a three. He, okay. Um, he got really sick from COVID. I think it's a, I don't know if he, I don't remember what he looked like, but was he was he Hispanic? Like I I, I think the Mexicans no, asked him. To play. No. Okay. He was uh, he was dark skinned. He was dark skinned okay. for sure. He may have been, you know, he may have had a Latin something going on. Obviously, Sabalos is a Latin sounding name, but yeah, I remember he's, he's he's being to Domin very Dominguez dark High School, Dominguez High School in Compton, California. So yeah, I've been to for... Dominguez. I've played game. I've had games in tournaments at Dominguez High School. That's my stomping grounds right there. I'm a Compton. You know, I'm Compton. I see. Me. That's Dude, me. You're from the streets. Dude, look I'm at I'm from these. the streets. I, all my games, all my games in middle school. You had school, an afro. We, yeah, I had an afro. All my games in middle this school. Is this is new. This is Ben Wallace. I mean, it's basically just, I don't even need to see you. I, I'm looking at you right now in the form of Ben yeah, I'm Wallace. Yeah, I'm on the court. <laughs> yeah, and I was a defensive bruiser, so sure, you sure. Know, I did have an outside shot, but I didn't have any handles, so it was really for me. It was all defense. I, I was a rebound. I, I had a nose for the ball. Did you? But then when, but then when I got the ball, they would just foul me, and I couldn't shoot. So. Yeah, hack of Brendan. Well, here's the thing, hack of Brendan. Well, here's the thing is that I'm five seven, but I was five seven when I was like in, you know, seventh eighth grade. Right, right. But Shoot. then I didn't, you know. But then I didn't. Um, you know, ever get any taller. So I was, a, uh, I was, you know, I played the post and, you know, when, when ninth, 10th grade rolled around, they weren't looking for a five, seven guy to play the post. And I yeah. couldn't dribble. I couldn't shoot. I didn't even know. Here's, here's what happened during the, during tryouts, they'd have a son. And I told you this Glenn on tales from the mall, mm -hmm. they'd have you go play, you know, in basketball camp, you know, just against other, you know, um, camp teams and the head coach calls me over after my just really, really embarrassing, you know, <laughs> uh, show. He said, son, have you ever played basketball before in your life? <laughs> that was it. That was the end. I'd rather you yell at me and tear me. Yeah, to yeah. And say yeah, yeah. Like that. that was yeah. it. That was the yeah. that was the, the Scott. This is Scott Adams would say the linguistic kill shot. Mm. <laughs> yeah. so there, there, there's a very good uh some some fun, fun facts about cedric sabalos so kobe bryant's grandfather and cedric sabalos grandfather were brothers um and they were the mexico so he did play for the mexico national basketball team so i'm sure there's some heritage there um in mm. 1992 whoa yeah so we, you guys were on to something there who's the big uh, fella there oh joe dumars yeah yeah uh classic Another three point in, uh, specialist but all also a bad boy, a bad, a bad boy. One pissed. of the great three point shooters of, of the 90s. Yeah, bad boy. Pissed. He was a do, uh, GM for the yeah. Pistons for like 15 years to the GM. Like he was there for a long time. And uh, so the, the teams that Cedric Sabalos played for after his last year in the NBA, which was with the Heat, he played in 2002. He played for the Las Vegas Slam. In 2002, he played for the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, he played for Hapel Tel Aviv. The Locomotive Mineral Hindvodi, which I don't know where that is. Um, the Sioux, so he's back in America. The Sioux Falls Sky Force, the San Miguel Beer Men, uh, Los Angeles Stars, the uh, Oak Orange County Maywood Buzz, and then the Phoenix Flame, and then back with the Maywood Buzz. Then he retired. Dude, the I Phoenix bet you they got his Flame. I, I bet you get, they got his jersey hanging up in the Maywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got the record for the. Can Phoenix you imagine? Flame. You know, we we you have the Phoenix Flame. That must have been a fun league they played in. But like, if you can you imagine like like you know we all know about like the guy the the music acts that had a brief stadium moment where they were stadium yeah. they were filling stadiums and then they end up and then they end up end up like filling like fair. you know chicken shacks. They're yeah. going on the road at these like tiny little, you know, uh, music bars and shit for the rest of their lives. Leon Russell is an example who I love. Yep. But imagine being an NBA player where you're a star for the Lakers. You're like literally the best player on the Lakers in L.A. Um, you have a, you know, like a lengthy NBA career. And then you end up with that run of pro, like, pl like playing those teams at the mm -hmm. at the end. Like what? I 
I wonder, was he depressed? Was he like, <laughs> how did he feel about that? Because that's the only like a, thing. The only thing that I can think of is that that motherfucker must have had like twenty five child support payments. Oh yeah. You know, like if, if oh, that yeah. if you're if you're going if you're saying okay, my like like if you retire from the Phoenix Suns or whatever his or the Heat, you know, you rest on your laurels. You know, like enjoy it. But and I mean, maybe some some people love basketball. You know, no doubt about it. You can't yeah. give it. You can't quit. But the thing is, is that I just wonder did this guy just he just had financial obligations that, and the only thing he could do was play. It must have been. That's what but I the thing think. is that, that these are like it, 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 this after the NBA, the place you go to make some kind of money, like up, you know, up to six figures, is Europe, like Europe. Or some foreign. He did the, he did Israel, but then the, all the other ones, they're like. He was Russian. Too. They're like Indian casinos in the middle of nowhere. They're not sure. <laughs> fifteen they're not bucks an alter. hour. They're like, like you would think he'd be able to get a job at Pol in the Polish league or any anything in where, where, where some money is possible. But yeah. Not that the Sioux Falls uh, uh, chief powwow uh, uh -huh. league like, commanders. Like yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, well, better to play in Sioux Falls than on the Phoenix Flames, I would think. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, yeah. like I think that's where or, he really hit rock bottom. Yeah, or yeah. the San Miguel Beermen. Yeah, that's not that's, not ex not exactly where I'd want. I'm to pretty be. sure like, the Phoenix Flame played their games at like oh. at at the, at the Abbey in in West Hollywood, and like well, he was a Phil like they would play at certain parties. Though he's playing in the Philippines, the San Miguel Beermen is the Philippines Basketball Association. Oh, okay, that makes the, more the sense. P at least that's the PBA, country. yeah. The PBA. Yeah, that's a step God, up. Can you imagine playing definitely basketball a step in the up from the? Uh... Yeah, I dropped thirty-five points against Manila the other night. Just like a five, a five-two <laughs> center, a five-two guy, a nurse, <laughs> a male male that... nurse. Yeah, L and L Hawaiian barbecue, fucking invitational. Oh, let's see, mm -hmm. Chauncey Billups is another. He's, he uh, dunked on sports. Miguel Reyes. <laughs> Yeah, on on Joey Corpus Christi Dominguez. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but let's see. The um, yeah, I, I didn't realize I forgot about Chauncey, Chauncey Billups. I think he's actually the current GM for somebody right now. That was just just saw him on ESPN. Yeah, he... Austin, Austin Crozier once again at the line. Every every time I every time I really key in on the game, Austin Crozier is at the at the line doing something. So he's just they they couldn't handle him. They had to hack him. Yeah, just... the hack a crochet strategy. Yeah, it is. Just yeah. look, we let anybody on the court. Well, Chauncey Billups is the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. Oh shit, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I know like he was doing something. I was like, I remember. I was like, yeah, I remember seeing him on TV doing an interview. And I was like, and it said something of this team. I, was, I didn't quite pay attention to it, but yeah. So he's uh, a lot of Trailblazer piston crossover today that we've been talking about. Oh, Rip Hamilton. Is that Rip Hamilton? Yes. Absolutely. So this Rip Hamilton sounds almost yeah, it sounds like Lynn Manuel Miranda's <laughs> next play. Next fucking Rip Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. I'm fighting in the palace. The palace. And, no, they get a bunch of white guys <laughs> in the palace <laughs> of the malice of, of the white guys to yeah. sing to sing country music. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna be in a Jordan Peele movie after that. Where yeah. like a, exactly. Oh, oh man, yeah. what a pass. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, she unstoppable. Oh man. That's yeah, that's I gotta Bill Walton's gotta be erect after something like that. Yeah, yeah. Big big man driving. I can't believe Bill Walton called call this game. <laughs> Yeah, well, he used to get a lot of ESPN Pride. I, that was memory hold to me too. But I remember in old video games, he was the voice, like NBA Live. Or I think it was like he would no, he was, yeah. but he was on the A team of like NBC or you know ABC. Like when it was him, um, uh, what's it? The little black guy, what's his name? Was the third mic, and then it was him, and then it was who was like the play by play. Like he was the main NBA guy for years. Was, it, was that when Pat O'Brien was the sideline guy, or the or was it was it? I remember Pat O'Brien was part of that broadcast. Some, I, I don't. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong on that. But God, why wouldn't he still be? You know, I, I know they, 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 they bumped him out off Doris. They yeah, because that voicemail, because the, because the best voicemail of all time was why Pat O'Brien. If you've never heard the Pat O'Brien voicemail, it's so good. Where he, no. he 
Oh, oh, it's great, man. I wish I could play it right now, but like he's he's on a he's on a he's like it was like some hooker or some fucking girl he was messing with. Where he's like, I'm gonna get the coke and you're gonna meet me over here and we're gonna fuck. And he like talks like that, like, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was Pat O'Brien, like, this was like based. yeah, no, it's it's like they're always like this these horrible tech, and it's like no, actually that's cool. Like what he does, yeah. what he's doing. well, the like, Irish are the king of voicemails. <laughs> yes, they are. They yeah. do like they do know how to leave a good voicemail, don't they? It's called an Irish voicemail instead of an Irish goodbye. <laughs> the, <laughs> well, the Irish car yeah, replaced yeah. the Irish car bomb. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Hey guys, if you like what you see in the video and want to see more, go ahead and click the link in the description. That's patreon.com slash the back wall. Filthy Armenian and I are going to be doing lots of classic games. We'd love for you to join us. Again, that's patreon.com slash the back wall.